The 10-year yield is falling sharply today. It's reached new lows this month as investors weigh trade concerns and a slowdown in the economy. But what is the Treasury yield and how does it affect the overall economy? The dip is bringing back concerns over an inverting yield curve. What does that mean? What does an inversion tell us? We're going to explain it all to you. It's time for Yahoo! You. Our own Brian Chung joins us with this week's lesson. Brian. So many questions, but classes in session, we are going to talk today about the yield curve. But to start off, we need to talk about what treasuries are in the first place. So there's a number of different types of maturities, and it actually is as short as one month to as old as 30 years. And you can see that the maturities are covering a lot of ground. Now, it's important to note that these treasuries are basically government debt that pays a certain yield. And because of the incentive to hold government debt for longer, generally the higher term or longer term treasuries will yield more than the shorter term treasuries. So let's take a look example at one of the longer term treasuries, that is the 10 year yield. So you've seen it dip down to 2.18%. And the 10 year treasury is considered to be one of the more liquid, uh, more traded securities. And what you're looking at right now is the secondary market. So after the government issues them, this is the market arbitraging what the proper price for the 10 year treasury is. So the yield that you see is 2.18% which means that if I had an investment in a bond with a principal amount of $1,000, the return yearly should, in theory, be $218. Now, keep in mind that bonds are not like stocks, though. It's not like up means good and down means bad. Keep in mind that the yields go down when there's more demand for these treasuries. And that's because treasuries are a safe asset. So if people don't see attractive investment options in the equities market, they'll pour money into the bond market, which means that those rates will go down. Now, conversely, when there's more demand for rates, that means that it'll actually go up. So let's take a look at the yield curve. This is basically plotting out different types of maturities uh, across the board. So we actually start off at one month, as we saw with the baby earlier in our, in our slide, and it goes up to 30 years. Let's look at the blue line first. So this is actually the yield curve as of a year ago, if you were to plot the different trajectories. Now, what you can see is that this makes sense, right? A, a 30-year treasury will yield more than a one-month treasury, which shows that people are generally more optimistic about the future because of the fact that yields on these bonds are generally a consensus on what people think about the future. But what we've seen over the past year, specifically over the past six months, is that this has inverted. So actually, some of these treasury yields particularly those below one year, have actually been above those of the 10-year yield, which means that some people are trading down the 10-year on expectations that maybe things aren't looking so bright in the future. Maybe that's because of trade tensions. Maybe that's because of other political issues. Maybe that's just because they just don't think that the market forces will be favorable in the long term. Now, let's move on to why the curve has gotten so flat on the front end, though. So it actually has something to do with the Federal Reserve. And the next chart will show you basically what the Federal Reserve moves look like relative to the shorter uh, term treasury. So what you're looking at here in the orange line is the three month treasury bill, a very short term bill. And keep in mind that the Fed, when it sets rates, is, sh is setting short term interest rates. So as it notches up and what you're looking at here is the is, is the range because the Fed does a lower bound and an upper bound. They've raised nine times in this cycle. You can see that the shorter term treasury bills are tracking pretty closely, albeit on a slight lag. But as of right now, the three month treasury bill trading basically right in line with the range of the Federal Reserve, which means that the inverting yield curve might actually partially be because of the Fed, at least on the front end and because of market forces on the longer term end. So why do people care so much about the yield curve? Well, it has to do with recessions. And the next chart that I'll show you is a little scary, but I'll walk you through it. So basically, you can see that this is the spread between the 10-year and the two-year. People look at these treasuries because they're the most liquid markets. So you take the 10-year treasury yield, you subtract it by the shorter-term yield, and what do you get? So you can see that when it dips into the negative, right, when the 10-year dips below the two-year, it's actually preceding a recession, which is actually denoted here by these, sh these shaded bars. So we saw that right before the 2008 financial crisis. Uh, we also saw that before in the 1990s. Now, it's interesting because we are getting really close right here. It hasn't tipped negative yet, but we're getting pretty close. But I do want to note that the, the uh, inversion of the yield curve has actually called the recession two times where it didn't. So it's not a perfect indicator, but it is one that people are paying very close attention to as we continue to hear worries about whether or not a recession is coming, especially with the tenure dipping down so low, whether or not that actually ends up being the case. We still need to watch very closely.